today on CityCast DC. If you've been in Adams Morgan recently, then you've probably seen the aftermath of attacks on local businesses. For example, Retro Bottega on 18th Street had its glass doors smashed in just yesterday. It's alarming, but business owners and local leaders are not taking it lying down. Today, we're looking at what they're doing to protect themselves and the community. Today is Thursday, February 16th, 2023. I'm Bridget Todd, and here's what DC is talking about. I'm here with Kristen Barden, Executive Director of Adams Morgan Business Improvement District, or The Bid. Kristen, thank you so much for being here with us today. Yes, thank you for having me. So I live in Columbia Heights, and pretty much every single day I go for a walk through Adams Morgan. And lately, I feel like I'm seeing more shattered glass, more plywood over windows because of all the break-ins. I know that you're tracking this more closely. How many break-ins are we up to at this point in the Adams Morgan area? I think there's been close to a dozen now. It's really unfortunate, but I think the number is that high. What have these attacks looked like? Most of them have been um, in the overnight hours, like between 2 and 5 a.m., when there's frankly not a lot of people around, right? Not a lot of police, not a lot of pedestrians. Businesses are closed. So these criminals have been targeting businesses with windows, right? They're walking in on the street level. They're not going on to second floor places. It's all um, first level. And it's a crime of opportunity. They're throwing something through the glass, getting in, going to the cash register, grabbing whatever cash is in there. And frankly, it's not usually very much, like, because business owners are smart. They don't leave a lot of cash in their drawer overnight. So they're getting, you know, hundred bucks or less and then they're out. It's a quick smash and grab, as they say. I wonder, like, are businesses being targeted? There are some businesses in Adams Morgan that I know have been hit multiple times. Um, do you have any idea on what's going on there? Yeah, I, it doesn't seem like, I mean, because there's a whole range of businesses that are getting uh, these overnight break-ins. Streets Market, unfortunately, has had three incidents, and they now have put plywood in their windows until they can get some, you know, reinforced glass installed. But there's been, you know, other types of businesses. There was a nail salon, there was a flower shop. I think the criminals are looking for quick places where they think there might be cash, you know, and the dry cleaners has gotten hit a few times. So it's not, you know, any one kind of business. They're going after anybody who has glass windows who they think might have some cash that's easily available. In one case, the criminals took the POS system, which was odd because it didn't have any cash in it. It was, you know, an iPad, basically. And I don't know what kind of a street value that had, frankly, but it's a few thousand dollars for them to replace it. So it really speaks to what you said about this being crimes of opportunity, that perhaps these people have not thought through what the actual value of breaking into this establishment would be, might not even be something that you could actually make money selling on the street. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Yeah, yeah. But the police, we've been working really closely with MPD and with the business owners and with the council member and the mayor's office of nightlife and culture. We're working really closely with all of those government agencies. What they think is that this is being done by one or two people at the most, and they're beginning to collect some really good camera footage. So they will catch them. Like we're pretty sure that they're going to catch them. And they've been putting a lot of resources in these overnight hours when most of this is happening. And and it's beginning to decrease. There were a couple more this weekend, but the overall trend is is slowing. So either they're moving to another neighborhood or they realize that they're going to get caught soon. How are Adams Morgan business owners feeling? Well, they're feeling on edge for sure. They feel very violated, right? And they're just now beginning to come out of the pandemic, right? And beginning to see some cash come back into their business. So it's it's disheartening, right? And I know Kathy at the dry cleaners, she's also had this probably the same guy come in with a gun and say, you know, I want cash from your drawer. And this was like two days after he probably broke in overnight. So She's really scared now because she's had somebody come in and point a gun at her. And she's usually there by herself. And I think that's the other thing that that we're trying to encourage business owners to have more than one staff person there, you know, especially the, the really small businesses. Don't be there by yourself, you know, even in the middle of the day, like have some, some other people around. But there are resources that DC government has to help replace the glass. There's the camera rebate program that DC government also has where they'll they'll reimburse you for the cost of the camera, not for the installation, but for the camera itself. 
Um, and there's actually talk now of increasing that amount of money that they'll reimburse you. So that's really encouraging because the amount right now is really not sufficient. It'll help, but it won't pay the whole thing. Yeah, I guess that's one of my big questions is that it's great that the D.C. government is looking for ways to help defer some of the costs, but ring cameras, bars on windows, that stuff is not cheap. And so is the expectation that business owners will just shoulder the cost of that? Yeah, well, we're hopeful that, I mean, the council member is introducing legislation, I believe, to increase the amount that can be reimbursed. So that would be really helpful. And I think in many cases, people are going to their insurance because replacing glass windows is expensive. Glass is a really expensive product. And the insurance companies are probably like the best first line of defense. But then there's also a lot of government grants available right now. The Great Streets Grant was announced recently. Those proposals are due later this month, I think. But that's up to $80,000. And that you can use for facade improvements like windows or doors. There's also a product that we had received a presentation on recently, and we've been distributing this information to our members as well. Um, And this product is like a film that you can put on the inside of your glass windows that won't prevent the glass from breaking. But if the glass does break, it will keep the window intact so that somebody can't actually penetrate it and get into the business. And that kind of thing, insurance companies might pay for it. It's a product to help reduce their potential liability, right? And it's not expensive. So it's like three or $400 to do one big window. So we've been encouraging businesses to maybe invest in that product too. And I know the company that we talked to, they're offering a discount to Adams Morgan businesses right now because they realize that there's a big need here. Yeah. The window film that you talked about is pretty clever because you know, nobody wants to live in a community with bars on every window, mm-hmm. right? And so you still no. want it to to feel and look like a community when you're engaging in retail and walking down the street. But you still want business owners to be safe and not have to incur such a cost if their glass gets busted by a vandal. Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. How do you think this um, is affecting residents who live in the area? You know, Adams Morgan, 18th Street Corridor is like a huge area for people going out, retail, dining, things like that. How do you think this is impacting how folks are feeling about Adams Morgan? From my general sense of the ANC meetings, I think that they're generally concerned. I know package thefts have been up in the neighborhood as well. So people are getting into some of these multifamily residential buildings and stealing packages. That's also been a problem lately. And I think that continuing to work closely with MPD and with the mayor's office of nightlife and culture and our council member, you know, and continue to keep those communication lines open, I think is going to be really important. And I know I've I've spoken to the commander of the third district, Commander um, Butler, and he's putting a lot of resources into these overnight hours to try to catch these guys. What would you say to someone who is either thinking about opening a business in Adams Morgan and and would just be thinking, I don't want to deal with this, or somebody who's an Adams Morgan resident who's feeling really on edge and maybe wants to leave the area? Like, what would you say to someone like that? Mm -hmm. Well, we want to encourage businesses to come into Adams Morgan and and to be interested in, in our properties. We have a lot of new businesses coming that we're really excited about. There's a new Van Leeuwen ice cream shop opening later this spring, and there's a Baja Tap and Taco coming in, and Jezere Chop House is also opening up next to Baja Tap and Taco. And recently, we had Lamont Royale open in early January. So there's a lot of really exciting stuff happening. A lot of new new businesses are choosing Adams Morgan, and we, we hope that they will continue to do that. Yeah, you definitely strike me as someone who is really excited about Adams Morgan and like really has a lot of excitement around the business opportunities there. As the executive director of the bid, how are you feeling about this personally? It's hard, right? It's hard to get these calls first thing every morning, you know, from business owners that are like, oh my God, they broke my windows last night. That was the case with the flower shop on Thursday and driving into work, you know, the owners calls me and I was like, oh my God, you know, and for them, it happened right before Valentine's Day. So it's hard, like, because I feel for them. Like, Adams Morgan is a great small business community, and we all know each other and we all support each other. And it's hard because it feels like a member of your family has been hurt. Do you have any other advice for Adams Morgan residents and business owners on how they should respond to these break ins? Yeah, well, if anybody sees anything, say something, right? Like, if anybody has video footage that you think might capture these criminals um, in the act or moving between these acts, please make sure that you give over that that video footage to MPD 
because that's what's going to help them connect the dots and get an arrest warrant and then hopefully a conviction. Well, Kristen Barden, thank you so much for being here and thank you for tracking this. And yeah, let's we'll, we'll have you back if there's an update on this. Yeah, I'd be happy to come back. And before you go, here's some quick news. Loudoun County School Board has decided not to release an independent report about two sexual assaults that happened in the past two school years. Both attacks were perpetuated by the same student. Board members who voted against the release argue that the report includes personally identifiable information on students, which is protected under FERPA. Meanwhile, if your water tastes a little bit funky over the next few months, don't be alarmed. The Washington Aqueduct, which provides water for D.C. and parts of Northern Virginia, is starting its annual process of switching water disinfectants. The process will last from Monday through May 15th, and it means that you may taste a little chlorine in your water, but they say it's perfectly safe. Also, the cherry blossoms will be coming out early this year, very early. The indicator tree, which blooms two weeks before the others on the National Mall, is already budding. The earliest recording of peak bloom was on March 15th, but the National Park Service thinks that this year might set a new record. And on that note, today's DC Life Hack is brought to you by audio producer Julia Karen. If you want to check out the beautiful blossoms but avoid the tidal basin, head to Kenwood. Sneaking to the burbs is sometimes the best way to avoid traffic. That's all for today here on CityCast DC. And if you enjoyed today's show, why not tell your friend who loves hanging out on Adams Morgan? And have them subscribe to our morning newsletter, too. We'll be back tomorrow morning with even more news from around the city. Talk to you then.